Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? Me? I am pleased as punch with myself because I believe I made a good decision in choosing the iPhone 6 Plus when I bought myself a new smartphone a couple of weeks ago. Now, I have been inundated with you asking me questions uh, if whether or not I was happy with the 6 Plus since I started showing it on the channel several weeks ago. So I thought I would do a bit of a review today. Now this is not a comprehensive review where I'm going to compare it to a bunch of other products because I haven't tested out a bunch of other products. This is a review of how the iPhone 6 Plus is fitting in Steve's life as I move ahead. So today on Dotto Tech, we are looking at the iPhone 6 Plus. <music> Now, when I decided to upgrade my smartphone a few, about a month ago, I had a big decision to make, whether or not I was gonna go with the iPhone 6 Plus, which frankly scared the heck out of me because it costs nearly what or more than a notebook computer. So it had better be a freaking awesome phone. I was really concerned about spending this much on a phone. Of course, I was also concerned about the form factor. Everybody's one concern about carrying around the iPhone 6 Plus is what's it going to be like to handle? What's it going to be like to carry, put in your pocket, etc.? Is it going to be at risk from falling and breaking? Is bend gate a reality? Is you're going to sit on it and bend it? So I, I was with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, I was a little reluctant uh, to choose it. But then when I went in the store and saw the screen, I knew that I needed to try the iPhone 6 Plus because the bottom line is I'm getting on in years and my eyesight, I've got some issues with my eyesight. So the small screen, the iPhone 4S that I've been using, I was using less and less because I actually found it a little bit of a chore to use it. I wasn't comfortable on it anymore. I had to work hard to use it. So I was using it less. As a matter of fact, I think from the time I got the iPhone 4, uh, I was using the, the phone less than I had with my previous phone, which was a BlackBerry, because on the BlackBerry, I was an email machine. I loved the, 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 the thumb typing keyboard, and I was just a machine at typing on that. And when I got to the iPhone, because the keyboard sucks on the iPhone, frankly, uh, and dictation was just, I was kind of getting my head around dictation, I stopped writing a lot of email on the iPhone, so consequently, I started using it less and less. Well, now I'm seeing with the iPhone 6 Plus, the one thing I'm noticing is using it for simple productivity things, calendar appointments, even writing simple emails, and even writing blog posts, I'm using it more and more because what I'm doing with it is I'm using the dictation capabilities in it. But the cool thing about it, as far as that's concerned, as far as using the dictation, is the fact that the screen is large enough and the keyboard is accessible enough that if I start If I start to dictate into the phone, comma, and I have to edit it, I can make edits very comfortably and easily. Plus, the font is large enough that I can comfortably read what it is I'm writing. So, as a result, I find that I am using this phone an awful lot for writing. So I'll just sit down on the couch and I'll write a blog post as opposed to sitting down on my notebook computer at my desktop computer. It's changing the way that I'm working to a certain extent. So I think from just from that perspective alone that the iPhone 6 Plus is 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 going to is, is going to be a big winner. So the screen size is absolutely everything as far as the 6 Plus is concerned. Now, going hat in hand with a larger screen comes another benefit, which I hadn't thought about quite as much, although it was always something that bothered me in the other phones, is with this large screen comes a big ass battery. The iPhone 6 Plus is lasting me a full day of use, which I can't tell you how much I appreciate. It's just awesome to be able to, to, be able to go out and not worry about the phone not lasting, especially with my old 4S, which the battery was on the very end of its life cycle at the end. So I was getting two or three hours of use out of it and uh, towards the end. So I was just kind of, it was just gagging and wheezing along. Um, so as I say, I'm starting to find that I'm using it for real productivity for writing. Now, one thing that I'd hoped it might do is replace, I've got an iPad, is replace my iPad. Now, I don't use the iPad for a lot, but I use it for research. Typically speaking, in the evening while we're watching TV or something, I might be researching an upcoming article or an upcoming feature. And so I'd be using the iPad a lot for that. I am using the iPhone for it. It's not quite as good as the full-size iPad as far as I'm concerned, but I'm getting more and more comfortable. And the resolution of this screen is just 
so amazing that you know you can zoom in and read. Now you do have to work a little bit harder to read web pages, and of course, as websites become more and more mobile friendly, it should resolve a little bit better. But by and large, I think I'm going to be able to replace the iPad with this. Now, one thing that I have done is I don't play a lot of games, uh, but I, I've downloaded this game here because I saw it on TV and it looked fun. And I've always been a bit of a sucker for those tower defense type games. So let me just clear all my stuff here. So I downloaded the Boom Beach. You see here, we got the Boom Beach happening. Now, I am enjoying playing the game on this little screen, and I never thought I would, but it comes down to that resolution. Look what happens as we zoom in. The clarity of the image on this screen, uh, what you're seeing here essentially is the same thing that I'm seeing on the screen. So you can see the quality of this is just spectacular. Now, while we're on this screen capture that you can see right now, and I'll just turn it, uh, let me just go back into the main operating system here. I, I know that there are Android users out there going, why, aren't, why didn't you choose one of the Android tablets, Steve? Why didn't you go, or, or uh, Android phablets or phones, or Steve? The reason that I stayed in the iOS world is doesn't come down to religion at all. I don't actually prefer iOS to Android. I have no preference. I think they're both great. But for doing the sort of work that I do, these sort of screen capture things, and what you're seeing right now, capturing this, this iPhone screen as I'm doing this demo, the Apple world just works way better. As a matter of fact, with the newest version of the operating system and the newest phones, I can actually plug in using the lightning connector and choose this phone as a source as I'm recording this demo, which is where I get this incredible quality from. Even before when I was recording other, uh, other phone demos, I was always using basically Wi-Fi to capture the iPhone screen. And I can do it a little bit on my Galaxy, on my Samsung Galaxy, but I'm limited to Samsung hardware when I do that. And it's a little bit more of a slog in order to capture the screens. So I went with the iPhone mainly because of convenience. It's, it's much easier for me to do the work that I have to do creating these demos using this. So uh, the other things, uh, the resolution that I talked about, oh, the case. I want to talk to you about the case. So the case that I chose for it, and I don't have it in the case right now, but it's this one here, which is called the Book Book Case. It comes from 12 South, and I had a Book Book Case before. Now, the reason I like this case is it's one of the folio or wallet cases, and it's beautifully handcrafted, real leather, and it's got a space there for all of my credit cards, as well as a billfold if I had any cash that I could put in there. And it's got little tabs here. So the cool thing about this case is the iPhone actually clips into the case so you've got a, a, a hard shell case but it's got little slots in the back that slide in and basically lock it into the case so I can use the phone by itself because you don't always want to have it in the case if you're just say doing stuff at home with it but then I can clip it into the case when I'm going out and then I've got my wallet with me uh, does it fit in my back pocket no I don't want to put it in my back pocket because I don't want to have bend gate I don't want to be sitting on it and bending it but it does fit comfortably although somewhat misshapenly in the breast pocket of a jacket. Uh, typically speaking though, I'll, I'll, you know, in a, in a normal coat, it goes nicely in the pockets. In a hoodie, it goes in the pocket. Although you do have to be a little bit careful because even in a, you know, you want to make sure you have fairly deep pockets, say in your hoodie, because of the weight and the size of it. it it's it uh, getting in the car the other day, I noticed that it could have quite easily fallen out if I hadn't put my hand down. So you do have to be a little bit more careful. It's definitely at a little bit more risk than a smaller phone as we travel about. Um, for me, uh, you know, I, it's not an, it, it doesn't seem like it's super inconvenient having a phone of this size as I'm traveling about. I had my iPhone 4S in a book book, so I always had my wallet and phone in one case and I like that. And that was one thing that I insisted on in, in moving ahead. So that's it. Do I have any buyer's remorse on this phone? Absolutely not. I, I'm, I'm happy with it. I wish it was less money. I think it's still ridiculously expensive, but, uh, beyond that, no, I'm happy with it, but I'd love to know what you think if you've bought or if you're considering buying. So let us know in the comments, especially if you bought the six or the six plus, and if you're happy with the purchase or if you're having a little bit of buyer's remorse and you would have rather gone bigger or smaller as the case may be. Hope you got a lot out of this video. As I said, it's not, it wasn't a comprehensive review. It's my opinion, which now you know. That's it for today. Uh, there's three ways to stay in touch with us here on Dotto Tech. The first is, of course, please subscribe to this channel. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, which will then get you in the loop to let you know about upcoming webinars and such things that we have coming along. And finally, Dotto Tech is a crowdfunded channel. You can check out our Patreon page to find out what's involved in becoming part of our community and the perks that are involved should you choose to become a part of our community. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>